Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. Even though the S550 is still the latest Mustang, these cars are over two years old in some cases, and a lot of them are starting to see some maintenance issues. One of them is the rear wheel bearing. Now, it appears to be the cars that are lowered or have aftermarket axles, or both, seem to have the biggest issue. In my opinion, I think what's happening is when you lower the car, you're getting some negative camber in the rear, and with a heavier axle plus that negative camber, it's going to wear on these bearings a little bit more than normal. In the case of my Mustang, I have over 25,000 miles on it. On a recent trip across the country, the rear started feeling loose on the ride home. When I checked it, sure enough, I had play in the rear wheel bearing. I looked around and found out this is not an uncommon issue. So today I'm going to show you how to replace the rear wheel bearings on your S550 Mustang. Now I've been mentioning the issue being with the rear wheel bearing, but the replacement part from Ford is going to be a complete hub assembly. This hub is going to fit your GT V6 or EcoBoost Mustang. It's also the same for the left or right side of the car. For this installation, they need a lift or a jack and jack stands, 3 8 ratchet, 10 millimeter socket, 14 millimeter socket, half inch ratchet or impact gun, 15 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter socket, 21 millimeter socket, 36 millimeter hub socket, torque wrench, 15 millimeter wrench, panel removal tool, small hammer, and a large screwdriver. Begin the installation, get the car off the ground, remove the wheel, then we're going to remove our caliper and our rotor. Now we're going to remove the pads and now the bracket. Now the bracket off, we're going to remove the rotor. Okay, we're going to remove this screw here that holds the brake line bracket on. Just give us a little more room to work. With everything out of the way now, we can remove the spindle nut from the half shaft. What we have to do next is separate the spindle from the control arm. What I found is easiest is to unbolt this up here, unbolt the two bottom ones from the control arm, but leave the vertical link attached. What we'll do is just loosen this up. That will allow us to actually swing down the spindle itself, not have to actually lift it off the car. Before we go any further, you want to make sure the ABS line has play. Remove it from the bracket if you haven't already. Then this little plastic clip here, separate that as well. That'll give us enough play in the line so nothing gets damaged. Now the lower control arm bolts. You got a longer one in the back here and a shorter one up front. Now we can remove the top bolt. Loosen this lower bolt next on the vertical link. We'll take it out, just a couple turns to loosen it up. Now you may or may not need a hammer, but push the axle through. Make sure this line's not too much tension on it. Now you can pull this down and access the rear bolts. Now once this is hanging down, now you can see these are the four bolts that hold the hub in to the spindle. At that point out, it may look like there's a lot of tension on this line, but there really isn't. It's okay where it is. We 
we're gonna clean up this area in here. Let's put a little grease in there as well, make assembly a little bit easier. And we'll slot a new bearing in. Get all forehand tight before we tighten anything down. Right, now we can begin reassembly. Everything we took apart just goes back into place. Hardest part here is just getting the axle lined up. I get all these threaded in. We don't want to tighten them. Get all three connected first. Then we'll go back through and tighten. Now we connect the lower arm. All the bolts are started. Now we go back, tighten everything down. Move back up to a brake line bracket. We'll start by connecting the clip we took off for the ABS line. Get the bracket back in place over here. Having tight in the last step here, reconnect the axle nut. Right, once the nut is threaded in, just get it snug for now. It's going to be really impossible to torque it at this point. This is going to keep spinning. Once everything else is reassembled, though, it's a lot easier to get that to torque. All right, now we can reinstall our rotor, then our caliper bracket, and our caliper. Finally now, rehang the caliper. Right, now we're just gonna put a screwdriver over here in the caliper. Stop it from turning. Now we can torque down the nut. And what we're gonna tell you to do is 98 foot pound of torque is what you wanna tighten this down to, and then an additional 45 degree turn. Now what we're gonna do from here is go 45 degrees. So you wanna make sure you can get the wrench so it's perfectly straight. You know, straight down is 90, so about halfway. At this point, you're going to reinstall your wheel and tire and your installation's finished. Now, I'm going to say this, 
you probably at this point want to repeat the process on the other side. If you have one bad bearing or one going bad, more than likely they both probably are and it's a good time to replace both parts which is not terribly expensive. If you're wondering about what the symptoms are, in my case, my wheel had a little bit of play in it, but they also can make noise. If you hear like a creaking and cracking sound when you pull out in first gear, when you're backing up, when you change gears, a lot of times that's a wheel bearing. Like I said, if you're having issues with the clicking noise or some wobble from your rear, you want to check the wheel bearings and make sure they're good. It's a very important part of the rear suspension, and if that goes out, you can really have some serious problems. Thankfully, Ford makes it a one-piece hub, and it's a bolt-on, so while it looks intimidating, it's really not that bad to do. Figure about an hour per side, we'll be back on the road in no time.